Sun coming out for SKT. So tell me a bit about Sun. He's kind of unknown to me. Um, I've seen his name a lot, but I haven't seen so many games of him. You know, Sun is... He did really well last season, and you know he was supposed to be like a big up-and-coming player. But I don't think I think his stats for this season are actually not that good. He's lost a few critical like game five deciding deciding games for his team. Uh, he seems to hit PVP a lot. I don't know if that's just because he's unlucky or something. But uh, last week he did actually manage to take uh, a game off of Harangi and close out a series. That's quite good. Yeah, it looks like he's three and five this season, uh, one and one against Zerg. So even though you know I I have the impression of him as a decent player. Uh, his stats are are not really reflective of that, but he's one of the big three SKT Protosses, of course. And True. ooh, I wasn't paying I mean, attention. Did you see what Crazy Hydra's stats have been this season? No, I didn't catch that. Ah, whatever. All right, go ahead. I'm sit sitting here checking the Team Liquid database and trying to find some stats. <laughs> Careful, don't spoil yourself. And does it does it's a trap, man? It's a trap. Huh? Uh, do they update it so quick? So long, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're they're really updated. good about updating. Um, oh. Kiet says he's four and two. I think, I uh, presumably, that was. It's crazy yeah, Hydra four and two. Yeah, that sounds a little bit good for Crazy Hydra, doesn't it? I don't yeah, know. That I'm not That's sure if that was the answer. <laughs> that might have just been like a random number pulled out of somewhere, and I just anyway. Maybe he played a lot of scrums or something. It's possible. It's possible. Looks like we're but getting hey, into I the mean, game. Uh, if, if KT will, if KT is going to win, they have to they have to have some other players than Flash, especially with the new format. So maybe Crazy Hydra yeah. one of those players. I mean, y you'd think that, and yet because because people in the beginning of the season, right, they were like, oh, you know, n you know, best of five, no ace match. KT's not going to do so well anymore, and they're still doing really, really well. I mean, they're in second place in the rankings right now. Uh, just behind Khan. If they win this match, they will actually be tied with Khan in matches, but they'll be ahead in uh, individual scores, so they'll actually take the number one spot again. Um, SKT, meanwhile, is uh, just trailing a little bit behind in third place. So they're... Uh, I actually don't know if they'll... I don't think they'll go o above KT even if they win this match. I'm not 100% sure, though. Hmm. Anyway. Looks like Sun will be in the top left as the yellow Protoss. Crazy Hydra will be in the top right as the white Zerg. He is guiding in the correct direction uh, with his Overlord. And that was a very strange picture of Hoja, I believe. Oh man, that guy's fancy. Oh, did they just like tape their phones to the sign? Is that what that is? It looks is? like it. <laughs> yeah. They just like glued their iPhones, like this expensive $500 <laughs> iPhone. They just like glue it to a sign. <laughs> oh okay. man. Those guys. They, they are dedicated. Those fans, yeah. man. I have to give him that. So the 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 PVC meta game isn't like the Zergs kind of QQing these days about the the pros against starting matchup. Wait, who's well, QQing? Uh, who's QQing? Yeah, I mean, uh, because Zergs always QQ because I mean that's why they're not the manly race. Cause, you know, just I'm just saying. And true, true. I mean, last if anybody saw last week's ZVPs in teammate versus STX, all right, Zergs, you have absolutely no reason to QQ. Uh, and if you do, I, I simply would like to introduce you to this awesome unit called the Hydralisk. It's pretty good against Protoss. If you make a lot of those, you have a pretty good chance of winning. I'm just saying. Anyway, oh man, that is an even more disturbing picture of Reach. Oh. Ugh. The mascot is scared me. Uh, Bunky doing his standard molesting ritual. <laughs> What's that? <clears throat> poor, poor, poor viewer in the, in the audience. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, guys, if you're lonely and you want some easy action, just uh, go to an SKT match and hook up with Bunky. <laughs> oh man, I should have that should have been my recommendation for any uh, lonely people on Valentine's Day. If you're lonely, just go uh, go find Bunky. He'll comfort you. Anyway, Crazy Hydra has done something very interesting here. We I have uh, <laughs> we haven't really been talking too much about the game. Uh, he actually took the three o'clock as his first expansion, and then blocked the ramp to stop the probe from going up, but it looks like uh, Sun being uh, pretty pretty clever himself, and uh, just going to check that anyway. So, he's not he shouldn't overreact or anything and be like, oh my god, he doesn't have an expansion, and make 10 cannons. Um, yeah, he's just gone for one cannon, and then his uh, his Nexus. Yeah, but still, one, one, one cannon before, before Nexus, that's kinda... 
That's a bit overacting in my opinion. Did he place it down before he scouted it? The uh, third or? Possibly. The thing is though, he actually doesn't know when the pool went down, so I think he's just trying to be safe, and I think it's fine, because if you look at what Crazy Hydra's doing, right, see he still can't put it down his own natural, uh, and he's had that drone on the ramp for a while, so he's actually losing a decent amount of mining time from that drone, so I think going the cannon first is, a, is an okay choice here. Yeah, you might be right. Oh, by the way, apparently Crazy Hydra beat Stork at some point. Oh. So, yeah, just throwing that out there. <clears throat> anyway, looks like uh, Sun's actually going to let that pylon finish. Very, very interesting move. Uh, as you can see, only two lings out, so it's going to take a, a little while to take that down. So that's uh, pretty annoying for Crazy Hydra. Yeah, it should, should offset the build a small bit, and that's always, always good. The probe's still active, harassing. <laughs> Yeah, Sun actually had two probes there just now. I don't know what that was about. I think he sent one of them back. He sent? Did he send one of them? Send one of them back, or did it die? I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. He might actually kill that drone though. Uh oh. Oh, get, uh, it. oh get it! Get it! Is he gonna shoot it from oh, the boy, back? Get oh! Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Ranging it from behind the minerals, so sick. Oh man, that was oh. quite cool. That was pretty sexy. One rage, man. It's good. Uh, SCVs don't have the range, right? It's only drones and probes. Yeah, I drones also, I'm not really sure. Like, do drones actually have two range, or is it just because the animation is a little bit big? Uh, I, think they, I think they have one range, and, and the SCVs like melee, so... Okay. Something like that. Because I know, because probes definitely have two range, but I've actually never quite been 100% sure about drones. They seem to be in like this little limbo where they have like the little spit animation, but I don't actually know if they have range. But all right, yeah, I guess I don't know. We'll see. If he shoots something with a drone from the other side of the mineral line, I guess we'll know. <clears throat> Probably down though, but uh, Sun has done a good job uh, keeping it alive and scanning around and killing a drone, so well worth it. Mm -hmm. And a spy. Yep, looks like. Is uh, it for, for, for scourge, or do you think it will go for Muta? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, his name is Crazy Hydra, but he doesn't seem to be as much of a Hydra user as like Shine. So I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll we'll have to see when he takes a second gas. Really. Uh, I think this map doesn't really seem to lend itself to mutas that much. The minerals are nice and packed against the edges of the map, uh, so it's a little bit harder to harass those. Um, we do have a second safety cannon going up at the front for Sun. And, uh, oh, I was going to say something else. Ah, what was that? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll remember later. But we are having a pretty standard mid-game here, after those early game shenanigans. Yeah, seems pretty standard to me. And I mean, <coughs> this map with all the ridges, I would, I would like to think that Lurkus would be a good a good choice with those siders. Absolutely, absolutely. Man, when I saw this map, I was like, if Peros gets Lurker contained at that ridge, it is literally impossible to break out. Like, I think we saw a game in in the first few, in like week three or four, a PVZ where that happened, and it was just so brutal to watch. Hey, anyway, it looks like first Corsair is uh, gonna get a kill here, but a couple of Scourge should be on the way, so uh, he shouldn't get a second kill. Meanwhile, on the minimap, you can see a few uh, links just going to the front, making sure Sun's not doing any uh, sneaky zealot attack at the same time. One interesting thing is that uh, it looks like at that 3 o'clock base, it's a little bit tricky to Sim City. He just built his 5th hatchery next to that expansion hatchery, and I'm not sure how he can... Maybe he can put a couple more buildings to the left of that. Um, it, it seems a little bit open uh, when when we got a shot of it earlier, so I'm not sure how he plans to uh, Sim City that. Although, since it is, much it is fairly close to his natural, I guess it's not as big a deal, because he will have uh, quick reinforcements there. Anyway, uh, Sun is going for Corsairs. And Crazy Hydra hasn't uh, shown any mutas or anything yet, just making a few Scourge, flying around. That is he a lost <laughs> Corsair. Why did he lose a Corsair? <sighs> pretty bad, that, that was, was pretty bad. bad. Yeah. Dark Templar's out on the map though. Won't be able to, to sneak that one in, since Overlords in a, are in a good position. <clears throat> it looks like he actually just made a grid of hatcheries out at the 3 o'clock. Not even gonna think about some sitting, just gonna slam out a ton of hydras here. And it looks like DT guy does get 
uh, taken down there. How did he actually see that? I, the Overlord must have seen it while it was flying down or something. That was a pretty nice catch. Because there's actually, like, there's no static, there's no sunkens anywhere. So, you know, if if Hydra's not paying attention and a DT runs into a drone line, uh, that could be, could be bad news bears. And there are some idle drones. <laughs> <laughs> Rally point. There we go. Oh, that man. was good. That's all right. I think we just uh, caught him at an awkward time there. <laughs> caught him with his pants down, so to speak. Yeah. So six hatcheries on three races, pretty standard. So probably see some some high dress soon enough. Yeah, and these Corsairs haven't done uh, an insane amount of damage just yet, but here we go, they're coming out right now. And there are actually Mutas coming out for Crazy Hydra. Now, Sun does spot this, I don't know why he's running away. Well, looks like he doesn't actually have plus one just yet. I didn't actually see if the Summer Next Core was spinning. Presumably he is getting it, since he's getting so many Corsairs. Uh, and adding another cannon in his main base. Um... It seems a little bit scared. He's also getting a robo at the natural, but actually that's a pretty standard timing. He does have four gateways, and then he's getting the robo, so that's actually fairly normal. Pretty many units there, and a flock of scourge, so maybe we'll try to, to suicide the, the, those Corsairs. Looks like plus one carapace actually finished for the mutas, and plus one attack is actually not done for the Corsairs. Uh, Sun has to be so careful now, uh, because since Corsairs are actually very low damage per shot and high uh, fire rate, the, the plus one carapace makes a huge difference. So uh, Sun, yeah, just using a storm there to, to ward the mutas away, really should wait for his plus one attack before engaging, and looks like that's what he's doing. He's being very careful uh, with these Corsairs. Um, meanwhile, yep, we just have an observatory at the natural and some speed lots moving out right now. But the thing, the interesting thing is that since uh, Hydra invested so much gas in these mutas and scourge, it's very unlikely that he's going to get uh, any number of lurkers anytime soon. And it looks like we're going to have a big engagement here. Hydra has to be very careful uh, how he engages these corsairs. You really want to get a nice spread, uh, uh, a flank if you can, with the scourge. If you just kind of a move and they all go in together with the mutas, all the splash damage from the corsairs will just pick everything off. He's got to be very, very careful with how he does this. By the way, I'm probably going to call Crazy Hydra just Hydra right now, not to be confused with the CJ player Hydra, but it's just so much easier than saying Crazy Hydra every time. I could call him like CH maybe. <laughs> CH? Really? Yeah. Go for it. I mean, I think the, the Hydra is uh, doing a pretty good job with this Mutas, and he's, he's splitting his scourge just, oh, just as I said that. Uh. All Mutas go down except like three of them <laughs> down on Red Hell. And oh no. Be, this could be bad. <laughs> that is so many Scourge though. Oh my god, that is a fleet of Scourge. There's one Hydra defending in the main base. Uh, oh. He can actually just kill that, I think. Uh, DTs with plus one attack can just one shot, or sorry, two shot Hydras. Oh man, that'd be awesome if they could one shot Hydras. Could you imagine if you could upgrade attack enough that DTs can one shot oh, Hydras? Scourge. And it looks like four or five courses do remain. That was pr most likely not worth it. That was so many Scourge. Oh, man. Crazy Hydra did not get the good spread on that. So, uh, yeah, I think Sun is definitely in a decent position. Although his supply isn't that much further ahead of uh, CH's. He's only about 12 supply ahead right now. But he's moving out. So let's see what he can do with this attack. He should be able to, to take that third base at least. Seems like he's making make some buildings right there, pylon. Um, and Crazy Hydra is still on three bases, so if he can hold that, he will be in a in a, in a pay position. Yeah, this is actually very interesting. So uh, Sun is just going to play a little bit defensively. Um, just going to take his third base. Uh, but you see, if you look at the because of their spawning locations on the map, um, that 12 base is a little bit vulnerable to like drops from the Zerg. It's just it'll be so easy for Crazy Hydra to just like drop two lurkers in the back of the mineral line there. So he's gonna be a little bit wary of that. And it looks like the mutas actually uh, have been rebuilt. It looks like he's got more than those uh, three survivors now. So he made a couple more. <laughs> I'm gonna snipe off the probe that was making that base. Gonna be a little bit annoying, but uh, can't do too much because there are still courses on the field. Looks like Sun is actually continuing Corsair production. This is actually very interesting. Uh, a lot of times Protosses, like, they'll invest in the early Corsairs, but, you know, after the, a big engagement like that, where they lose a bunch of Corsairs, they don't actually continue the Corsair production. Um, you know, they just switch into a primarily ground army, so it's uh, interesting to see him do that. 
True, true but, but I actually like it because uh, the, the high tempo sniping with the mutas can, can be so effective in the mid game, and then the hydras just roll in and kill everything. So, so I, I like the corsairs. Indeed, I would agree with you there. And Sun is just content to chill on this ridge. Um, this is a nice position for him. It's basically covering all attack angles. Uh, you know, I mean, in theory, Crazy Hydra might try and do a runaround along the south side. And whoa, big engagement here with the corsairs. Uh, I think an observer got sniped there. I, I thought I heard an observer die. I don't know why yeah. an observer was randomly there. Anyway, yeah, it's That's see, bad. Crazy Hydra. He can, I guess, swing around the south side. I do see some white units moving along there, but uh, that is such a nice position for Sun to camp his army. Like it's so easy for him to go back and defend his natural, and he is defending his third base as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty good position. Meanwhile, Crazy Hydra now taking his fourth base at the bottom right natural. Oh, nice building placement. That's actually very pretty. It, it, what's pretty? <laughs> I didn't uh, get the to building that. placement in the Pirelles Pass. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> true. <clears throat> Very stacked, and once again, course against the units. It's not a fight you want to take, Hydra. I, does does Hydra have like? Does he think that the Corsairs are actually high Templars or something? Because he keeps like flying in all stacked and like you know shooting off a volley and then running away as if he's gonna snipe a randomly snipe a Corsair. I mean. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't really understand that. He's being really oh. fancy. And oh, Usain Bolt, <laughs> zealots! <laughs> oh, oh man! What the? <laughs> Those zealots are training for the upcoming Olympics. Whoa! Kurnoff's gonna get gold for Fire. sure in the hundred meter sprint. And it looks like uh, Sun has finally decided oh. to attack. There are a decent amount of Lurkers and Hydras on that ridge. It looks like a lot of the Corsairs actually got taken down because they got in, uh, they went in too fast. And yeah, this, I, I don't think this will work for Sun, to be honest. Yeah, but for the, uh, for the people wondering what just happened there, that's actually a known bug. Uh, that has been... That has happened in pro games before, I think. Basically, like, uh, just due to some weird pathing thing, if the, the, the Zelts are, like, trying to run past each other, but since they keep like bumping into into each other, it's like when you walk down the street and you like you know run into somebody and you like both trying to move out the way, but you both go in the same direction. It's like exactly what happens there. And the way the Brood War AI solves that is by giving the both units a temporary speed boost to try and shuffle out of each other's way. But if it just happens that they both go in the same direction anyway, then you get like this crazy sprint, uh, which is quite funny. I'm pretty sure that's like the principle behind it. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure. Anyway, but like you can see it done with lurkers as well and stuff. It's it's quite. It's quite cool. Anyway, Hydra has held off that attack, and he's actually sending, uh, looks like about half his army around the south side to go for a counterattack, uh, while Sun moves in towards a natural. I mean, it's, as I said, it's going to be very difficult to, to break that ridge with so many lurkers on it. Um, that is just such a nice defensive position. Uh, although, I don't know if Hydra has left enough units here. Sun doing a good job pulling all the uh, all his Zealots and Templars back and uh, using the Dragoons to spearhead the assault. Looks like the Mute is coming in. A lot of good storms on the Hydras. Sun is actually going to break through here. The Hydra army of Crazy Hydra is actually coming in the backside. Looks like a random DT or something was in the main base, but these Hydras are all clumped up. They could get stormed so badly. Where are the storms? The storms. No. Please, stop. There we have one storm at least, but this flank is too good. It's, it's too many. I think that I think that Sun is kind of bad here. Oh my god, and Sun's army gets completely crushed. I thought he was doing such an amazing job on that attack, and yet <laughs> three control groups of Hydras came in from the back, and Crazy Hydra is now in a fantastic position. All you QQ yeah, Zergs. Yeah, I like those Lurker eggs too. See, clearly the solution to ZVP is just to make more Hydralisks. Oh my god. That was so brutal. Uh, and Sun has now fallen behind in the supply. There's the KT coach looking on. He didn't doesn't look too pleased, even though you know he, he's about to go up 2-0, or his nope. team is. Nope. Kind of weird, actually. This uh, reinforcing zealots though is doing a pretty good job, but more and more high and Lark is streaming in, so doesn't look good for Sun right now. Yeah, Sun is down like 20 supply now. Uh, he is pretty dead at this point. He's going to lose his third base. And, I mean, see, the, the mass zealot pump is a good way to reinforce, because obviously the zealots, they build very quickly, and uh, they they walk very quickly, or run very quickly, because of the speed upgrade. So they're good as, like, a reinforcement unit when you're, like, doing a big attack with your main army, and then you want to, you know, just rally all your gateways to the front, and you just mass pump zealots, and it's quite effective. I mean, we saw Best put that to really good use in several games. But, uh... 
if you actually don't have the core units of like Dragoons and Templar, Pure Zealot by itself is actually not very strong at all against Pure Hydra. It's actually bad, so you know, this kind of thing is not gonna work. And now Hydra controls the ridge outside Sun's Natural. Uh Sun's gonna be completely contained and basically mined out, I think, pretty soon here. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not even sure why Sun tried to attack in the first place. I mean, he had a good position on the ramp. He could have just tried to, to secure a fourth and, and take up a bit more. Maybe add in some Reavers or something. But I don't know. It feels it feels like suicide attacking attacking up a ridge with with Locus and Hydus. Yeah, I mean, we can just see the uh, brutal position. Did that Kakar Did it Kakaro just die in a storm? I'm pretty sure yeah. Kakaro just died in a side storm there. Sun, that's pretty BM, man. I mean, I know you want to be as cool as stats, but don't don't be hating on the Kakarus. <laughs> just because you can't just because you can't kill Hydras doesn't mean you got to go around killing Kakarus. That's PM. It is. I don't know how many observers Sun has lost. I think he lost like five or six of them already. It's kind of brutal to watch. Yeah, he's got like two observers now, but now he's got no ground army, so <laughs> he's, he, he keeps getting one but not the other. And that Dragoon is freaking out in that gateway. Is that actually stuck? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. So, <clears throat> he would have tried to do a, a last push, but uh, after this we would probably see the GG since he has nothing left. Yeah, just going to struggle a bit, doing some nice storms. Uh... Crazy a Hydra just flooding in the units, so much stuff. He, you know, he doesn't actually have to do anything right now. He can just sit on that ridge until Sun has no more money, and then he'll just win automatically. Like he doesn't have to attack, but you know, he's gonna be a good sport. He's gonna make the game somewhat entertaining in Sun's last moments. And Sun looking troubled. <laughs> well, the thing is now KT, there's a GG, and now KT goes yeah. up 2-0 over SKT. Uh, are we gonna yeah. have another sweep here? Oh, I don't man. know. Yes. Yes, hopefully they send these to a fantasy. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I don't know. If you were the KT coach, would you send stats now? I'm pretty sure stats could take fantasy. Against Bisu, it would be a little bit iffy, just because it's PvP. Yeah, but, but I mean, still, it's PvP, and. A, a Reva Scarab can, can be the difference between uh, between victory and, and loss. So yeah, maybe stats. Why not? Hmm. Well, anyway, let us just go on to the game, and then we can see. <laughs> Gotta wait for this ad to go away.